Welcome to another Ziva math video. In this video, we will learn how to solve two-step equations when the problems include integer operations when solving. Our steps for solving equations won't change. We'll just need to be careful with the positive and negative signs. If this is your first time solving two-step equations, be sure you check out our video on solving two-step equations with whole numbers. You may also want to review integer operations. Both links are in the description below. Let's take a look at our examples. For our first example, we have negative 3m plus 6 equals negative 9. And even though we see the negative signs in this problem, our steps aren't going to change. We're looking at the negative 3m. The negative 3 is with the m. It's one piece for right now, and that's what we're going to need to isolate first. So I'm going to box it. Then you may want to put the line down your center of your equal sign so that you can see what you do on the left, you're doing the same thing on the right. Well, if negative 3m is what I want to have by itself first, well, I have negative 3m plus 6, which means the inverse operation is to subtract 6. And I'm going to need to subtract 6 from both sides. So on the left-hand side, I haven't done anything to the negative 3m. Then I have plus 6 minus 6, which is 0 equals, on the right, I have negative 9 minus 6. So you have to follow the rules for adding integers with the same sign. We're going to add the integers and keep the sign. So 9 plus 6 is 15, and we're going to keep the negative sign. So now I can simplify this line, because negative 3m plus 0 is simply negative 3m equals negative 15, because I haven't done anything to the negative 15 in that step. Now I have a one-step equation because I have negative 3m equals negative 15. So now it's time to isolate my variable. Well, I had negative 3 times m, which means my inverse operation is going to be to divide, and I'm going to need to divide by the negative 3. If I divide the left by negative 3, I need to divide the right-hand side by negative 3. So on the left, the negative 3s will simplify out, and a negative divided by a negative is a positive, leaving me with positive m equals, on the right now, I have a negative divided by a negative, which is a positive, and 15 divided by 3 is 5. And even though we're working with equations with negative numbers in them, we can still check our answers. So to make sure that m really does equal 5, I'm going to go back to that original equation, and I'm going to substitute my positive 5 for m. So to check, I'll have negative 3 times positive 5 plus 6, and does that really equal negative 9? Well, negative 3 times positive 5, and negative times a positive is a negative. 3 times 5 is 15, so negative 15 plus 6 equals negative 9. And for my negative 15 plus 6, I need to follow the rules for adding integers with different signs, which is to subtract. So 15 minus 6 is 9. And keep the sign of the number with the larger absolute value, which is the negative 15. So I do have negative 9 equals negative 9. So my solution of m equals 5 is correct. For our next example, we have negative 16 equals negative 4 plus 2x. And we're going to start by looking at the 2x because that is what we're going to need to isolate. And you may want to go ahead and box that up and also put the line down the center of your equal sign so you can see whatever you do to the left, we're also doing to the right. Now we said we'd want to isolate the 2x first to get 2x all by itself. Well, with 2x right now, I have negative 4 plus the 2x, so I have the negative 4. Well, the inverse of the negative 4 is going to be to add 4, to add a positive 4 to the right-hand side of our equation. And if we add 4 to the right-hand side of our equation, we'll need to add 4 to the left-hand side of the equation. Then on the left-hand side, you have negative 16 plus 4. Adding integers with different signs, you are going to subtract. 16 minus 4 is 12. And you keep the sign of the number with the larger absolute value. That's the negative 16. So we'll have negative 12 on the left. Then on the right, the negative 4 plus 4 is 0, plus the 2x that we've not done anything to. 
Now we can simplify this line. We'll have the negative 12 on the left because we didn't do anything to it in that step equals, well, 0 plus 2x is 2x. So now I've isolated the 2x, and I have a one-step equation. I have negative 12 equals 2x, and we're ready to isolate x to get the variable all by itself. Well, I have 2 times x, so my inverse to multiplication is to divide. I'm going to divide by 2 because that's what I multiplied x by. So on the left, I'm also going to divide by 2. So going back to the right-hand side of our equation, our 2's are going to simplify out, leaving us with just x on the right. And then on the left, I have a negative divided by a positive, which is a negative, and I have 12 divided by 2, which is 6. So I will have negative 6 on the left. So negative 6 equals x is my solution. And remember, if you want to check your solution, which I'm not going to do here, but if you need to check a solution, you go back to your original equation and you take what you got for the variable. So what you got for x was negative 6. So we'll substitute negative 6 for x and make sure that we get a true statement. For our third example, we have negative x divided by 2 minus 6 equals 2. And looking at what we're wanting to isolate first, well, ultimately we want to isolate the variable. Right now our variable is being divided by 2, and there's this negative sign in front of it. That's what we're going to need to isolate first, so that's what I'm going to box up. You may want to add the line down your equal sign so that you can make sure that whatever you're doing on the left-hand side of the equation, you're also doing on the right-hand side of the equation. So with the thought that the negative x over 2 is what we're wanting to isolate first, First, we have negative x over 2 minus 6, which means our inverse operation to get the negative x over 2 by itself is going to be to add 6. If I add 6 to the left-hand side of the equation, I have to add 6 to the right-hand side of the equation. So now on the left, I have the negative x over 2, because I haven't done anything to that part of my equation yet. Then I have minus 6 plus 6, which is going to be a plus 0 equals, on the right-hand side, I have 2 plus 6 adding two positive numbers, so 2 plus 6 is a positive 8. Now I can simplify this line, and that's my next step. I have negative x over 2 plus 0, which simply equals negative x over 2. Equals, on the right-hand side, I didn't do anything to the 8, so it stays exactly the same. Now I have a one-step equation. I have negative x divided by 2 equals 8, and I'm going to isolate my variable x. I want to get x by itself, and I have right now x divided by 2, so I know I'm going to need to multiply. And I'm going to think about that negative sign as being with the 2. So what I'm going to multiply by is the negative 2. I want x all by itself. I don't want the negative sign with the x. So if I multiply the left-hand side by negative 2, then I'm going to need to multiply the right-hand side of my equation by negative 2 as well. On the left-hand side of the equation, the 2's are going to simplify out. I have a negative times a negative, which will give me a positive x. And on the right-hand side of the equation, I have 8 times negative 2. Well, a positive times a negative is a negative, and 8 times 2 is 16. So I get x equals negative 16. And remember, we can check these as well, and we check them by taking what we got for our variable and substituting it for the variable in our original equation. So going back to our original equation, we have the negative sign, then we're going to substitute our negative 16 in for x, so we have negative 16 divided by 2 minus 6 equals 2. And with this negative sign in front of our negative 16 over 2, you're going to want to put parentheses around the negative 16 over 2 just to add a little bit of separation here. Then, just like we did when we were solving, we need to think about this negative sign here. And my recommendation for handling it is to think about it as being a negative 1, because then when we multiply it by what's inside the parentheses, we will have accounted for it. Well, we have negative 16 divided by 2, and negative divided by a positive is a negative. 16 divided by 2 is 8. And then we have negative 6 equals 2 
to write out the rest of our equation. So now that negative 1 times negative 8 gives us a positive 8 minus 6 equals 2. So 8 minus 6 is 2, so we get a true statement here at the end of 2 equals 2, which means that our solution of x equals negative 16 is correct. For our final example, we have 4 equals 9 plus n over 8. And we do want to isolate our variable, but for right now, we have n over 8. That's what needs to stay grouped together. That's what we're going to box first. That's what we need to get by itself first. And then adding that line down your equal sign so that you can see that whatever you're doing to the left, you're also doing to the right to keep your equation balanced. If we want to get n over 8 by itself first, we have to deal with this 9. We have a positive 9, so our inverse is going to be to subtract 9. If I subtract 9 from the right, I need to subtract 9 from the left. Now on the left, you have 4 minus 9, so you can treat this as subtracting integers, which means you would keep the sign of the first number, change subtraction to addition, and change the sign of the second number, or you can just treat it as adding integers with different signs. So to add integers with different signs, remember you subtract, 9 minus 4 is 5, and you keep the sign of the larger absolute value, which is the negative 9. So we'll have negative 5 on the left-hand side equals 9 minus 9 is 0 plus n over 8 on the right. Now this line we can simplify. On the left, we're not doing anything to the negative 5 in this step, so negative 5 will remain negative 5. And then on the right, we have 0 plus n over 8, which equals n over 8. So when we simplify this equation, we get negative 5 equals n over 8. And now we have a one-step equation. So now we're ready to isolate the n, which means if you're ready to box it, so you can see that's what you're isolating, now is the time to do that. We have n divided by 8, which means our inverse operation is to multiply. We're going to be multiplying by the 8. And if I multiply on the right-hand side by 8, I need to multiply on the left-hand side by 8. On the right-hand side, in this multiplication step, these 8s will simplify out, leaving me with just n, just my variable on the right. And then on the left-hand side, we have 8 times negative 5. A positive times a negative is a negative, And 8 times 5 is 40. So we get negative 40 equals n. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to Ziva Math for more videos.